You only need spiritual protection if you ain't living right. That's your profound peace and blessings. This is Derek Rock Hoopmore. And um, in this video, I want to go ahead. I want to talk about spiritual protection. And um, before I actually go into it, I want to actually talk about the fact that, or mention the fact that I received over the past, say, two, three weeks or so, some very interesting bizarre um you know just strange um comments and and some requests um that were made that you know like i said they just they were so some of these comments they were like so awkward that um and bizarre that they just made me just step back it was like okay and ask you know is that individual i wonder if that's an agent <laughs> you know i mean it was really out there um, for the most part, I understood where a lot of these comments and a lot of the questions were, or, you know, requests were coming from. And that's because, as I've mentioned in previous videos, um, we've all been brainwashed. We've all been hoodwinked. We've all been willy lynched. We've all been basically fined muck into uh, believing that there is someone or something that's gonna come out from the sky and it's gonna save us, okay? We've all, been, we've all been convinced of this, you know? And as a result of that, we, we, we go through life looking for somebody to save us. We go through life looking for someone to help us um, and thinking that they have the answers instead of us actually going ahead and learning how to go within to get those answers for ourselves. Okay. So like I said, I understand it. I, I, I know where the it comes from because I know the mindset because I used to be there. I used to deal with it. I was, you know, I've done it before. Um, I'm not an expert away from it, but I mean, I'm familiar with it because I've dealt with it. And unless you're actually uh, dealing with, you know, unless you're actually doing some rituals, unless you're actually, you know, working with your ancestors, working with your guides to um, relieve yourself or escape that mindset, that way of thinking, um, it's going to continue to be there. It's going to continue to kind of haunt you and influence you in making decisions and influence you in doing certain things that you are doing sabotaging you you when you're trying to go in here and make some kind of sp um, spiritual progress so it's spiritually sabotaging you all right so i'm saying all that because like i said i understand it and um this is the reason why i am this is the reason why all the videos that you see, they are spirit led, all right? Um, what I mean when I say spirit led is that basically before I publish the video, um, I'm doing, you know, do oracle readings. I, I yeah, I do readings um, I, to see how beneficial the video is gonna be, um, to see if it should be published in it because to see if it's going to be a benefit to people. Um, I meditate, I contemplate with my ancestors, you know, again, because they are my spiritual support. And I do this in order to get spiritual support. If my ancestors and my spirit guides, if they say basically, hey, don't do this, don't publish that video or don't go with, go for it with it, then I don't do it. Okay. Um, if they do, if they give me the back and they give me the support, then basically I do it, okay? Now, the reason why I do this is because in the past, I've gone ahead and I've made some real grave errors. I've had some real, real grave errors. Um, and um, those of you who know, um, you know, have watched some my earlier videos, you know that I've talked about the fact that Shehuti, who the Greeks call Thoth, um, he governs my incarnation. He governs my, my purpose of being here. So that means that every time I'm going ahead and I'm doing something that's major, I need to go ahead and I need to, do, I need to get some counsel on it. 
I can't just rely on this right here. Every time I rely on this right here, when it comes to dealing with that, we're gonna have some issues. And I can write stories, I can write, <laughs> you know, volumes of how this right here caused a whole lot of problems. And, you know, and when I'm saying some whole lot of problems, I mean major problems, I mean, I'm referring to the fact that, uh, I mean, stuff that has required like years in order to actually repair the damage, okay? So that's part of the reason why I go in here and, I, and all the videos that you see, they are spirit lit. It's the reason why when you watch a video, it just seems to be right on time. The synchronicity and everything is on point because it's the spirits who are basically giving me that and they're telling me, hey, go ahead and do this. You know, they give me that inspiration to go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, if they don't get the inspiration, like I said, I don't do it. All right. Um, do I falter? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, because it's life, you know, I, I'm still learning. All right. Not claiming to be perfect or expert in any of this. Um, I'm still learning. Um, but like I said, that's the whole point of life is for me to actually learn that. And it's for us to learn that so that we can go in here and like I said, move on. All right. Now, um, that being said, that being said, I wanted to let people know that I practice what I call cam time. And I want to kind of give some clarity on that so that you kind of understand what I mean when I'm saying that. But I practice what I call cam time, spell K A M T A. Cam time is, from what I gather, is the African legend that our ancestors practiced when they were brought here to North America. Because they did not have a name for the religion that they practice, um, I was instructed, you know, to call it Kamta because a lot of the historians, they refer to it as the invisible institution, right? Now, this spirituality is not... It overlaps Christianity because as I've mentioned in our previous videos, this line that I'm dealing with is very Congo influence. Okay. So it overlaps Christianity, but it's not Christianity. All right. Um, it was because it was basically assimilated and it intertwined itself with Christianity to so much that a lot of times we went in here and we assumed that that's what it was, okay? But it was quite different. And when you actually get into the actual, when you actually study African theology, and, and I'm including the comedic, you know, tradition in that, when you actually study it and you actually really, really study and understand what the, the theology deals with, you'll have a better understanding of what it is that our ancestors did how our ancestors went ahead and they were able to um, conceal it and everything else, okay? So the reason why my ancestors told me to call it Cam Ta instead of calling it the Invisible Institution is because Cam Ta is a reference to, Cam Ta means the Black Lands, and it's a reference to Kemetic spirituality, which is where the roots of our ancestral traditions come from. But it's also a pun referring to the fact that um, our ancestors here in this country had to practice their spirituality in secret. They had to practice it in the groves. They had to practice it in the fields. They had to practice it um, basically. They had to practice it basically um, in secret. And it was like it was hidden in plain sight, okay? And that's the reason why it's called Cam Ta. It's more, of a, it's more of an esoteric reference to the ancestral realm and the ancestral support and backing, all right? Now, I mentioned all that and I say all that because um, our spirituality, our ancestral spirituality is different from the hoodoo tradition, all right? 
Now, I know you'll come across people and there's a lot of people that disagree with this and everything, but it was. It's completely different. It's, it's different from the hoodoo tradition, all right? Hoodoo is a African-American magical tradition, all right? Um, hoodoo is very, very similar to, in, in regards to worldly pursuits and all that kind of stuff, very similar to European sorcery, which is part of the reason why when you look into it, 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 it has so many different elements that they've adopted and borrowed from European witchcraft because it has a, it, it really has a sorcerous element to it. OK, now a lot of people will go ahead and they'll say, OK, well, you know, uh, basically the you know the religion of the the africans that were brought here it was the same thing or it was hoodoo and all that and that's most of those people who say that they don't understand african-american culture and that's the reason why in my opinion the reason why they say that because they really don't know all right the difference between our spirituality or our ancestral spirituality and the hoodoo tradition is that the hoodoo tradition basically has the spirit element extracted out of it okay and that's the difference that is the main difference okay um because of that difference this is the reason why most african americans you know never really even heard of the term hoodoo okay i mean recent years they've heard of it but there's not a whole lot of mention of oh people going to hand practice in hoodoo okay because that's not what they called it, all right? That's not what they practiced. That spiritu their spirituality was not called hoodoo. They didn't even associate themselves with hoodoo, okay? Hoodoo, basically, as I mentioned before, the spirit element was taken out of it. This is not to say that they didn't have spirits involved, but the spirit or the spiritual aspect of it was extracted out of it which allowed hoodoo to be practiced by everyone and anyone so for instance you can practice hoodoo regardless of your regardless of your beliefs regardless of your sexual preference regardless of your ethnicity regardless of your background and wherever region you came from and the reason why is because the spiritual aspect of it or the spirit aspect of it was extracted out of it. Our spirituality wasn't practiced that way. When you practice our spirituality, okay, there was a certain rule that you had to follow. There was a certain way you had to live. There were certain things that you had to do, okay? There was certain practices that you were involved or that you were engaged in, all right? Um, and the reason why, because it was so intertwined, our spirituality was so intertwined in uh, with Christianity, a lot of people assumed that this basically dealt with, oh, this is what it meant to be in the church, okay? But closer look, when you really, really understand and you investigate and really understand and research our spirituality, you find out that's not the case. The reason why it was tied like that was because this was the way the ancestors set it up. This was our spirituality. This was the ancestral uh, connection and ancestral support that was involved in it. Okay? Now, understand the difference. Okay? Understand the difference between the two. Our spirituality, it was always considered, because it was tied to the church and everything, it dealt with doing things from a spiritual perspective. Okay? Who, do on the other hand, it was existed outside of the church and it dealt with doing things from a secular perspective. Okay. This, and again, like I said, this is the reason why most people, most, a lot of African Americans never even heard of the term hoodoo. They never, and they never associated or tied it to their spirituality. And the reason why is because it was dealt with hoodoo dealt with secular things. Okay. Um, in, in, from, a, from an African-American Amer perspective, an older or elderly African-American perspective, hoodoo is what is considered to be, uh, what's considered to be witchcraft. From an African perspective, 
witchcraft is considered to be anything that exists outside of the community, anything that is done selfishly in order to gratify someone's selfish needs. Okay, and that's the reason why it's shunned. That's the reason why hoodoo was shunned. That's the reason why everybody didn't practice hoodoo. Okay, now again, when this was all basically is tied into Christianity, okay, and if you when you understand the culture, this explains the reason why you didn't hear it wasn't a whole lot of people, you know, in the church, and wasn't a whole lot of people, a whole lot of family members who were telling you about hoodoo. This is part of the reason why hoodoo almost basically fell out of, you know, went into, uh, uh, you know, almost became extinct because black people didn't talk about it, all right? Because most black people didn't deal with it. They didn't practice it, all right? The stories, you know, when you had these people um, who went in here and they started investigating and finding out, oh, okay, well, you know, they did their research and they was like, well, this is where hoodoo is and blah, 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 blah. They didn't research and they didn't go to the churches or talk to those mothers and the deacons, the, the, the elders of the church. They didn't talk to those people about what, you know, what is hoodoo. They didn't talk to these people about the African spirituality or the spirituality of our ancestors. They talked to the people in the secular area. They went and they talked to old blues singers because those were the individuals who were outside of the African-American community who were considered to be on that path, okay? That's why they went ahead. That's why you find stories about hoodoo all within, you know, within the blues community, okay? You ain't gonna find a whole lot of stories within the African-American community that deals with the church or anything else, okay? Because they're still, that's, that's that branch, okay? Now, keeping that in mind, okay? When it comes to spiritual protection, if you went ahead and you're following which is called the righteous way, all right? And you're doing things from a righteous perspective. But again, like I said, because this was tied to the church, they called it doing going to church or doing the godly thing. OK, being spiritual. OK, this is before being spiritual or, you know, being more spiritual became popular. If you went ahead and you were dealing with anything in regards to the spiritual or our spirituality, then you receive, those of us who are in the church, you've heard this, you receive the anointing, okay? The anointing, when you talk to other people in other African traditions, the anointing, or what they also call the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, okay? Or the blood of the Lamb, okay? When you talk to all of these, you talk to people from, you know, like I said, in other African traditions, you find out this is all a reference to the ancestral protection and ancestral support and spirituality. Okay? The ancestors set up forth a certain way in which they're supposed to live and which you, they wanted you to live in order for the, in order to guarantee their return back. Okay? That's the reason why certain things were set up that way. All right? Again, because it was all tied to the church, we all go, most of us went ahead and assumed, oh, this deals with Christianity. But when you find out, when you read and you study anything about our spirituality, about our ancestors' spirituality and their philosophy and theology, you find out it's not Christianity, okay? This is the reason why. This is the reason why. You have people who was in the KKK who were Christians still going ahead and terrorizing us, okay? It didn't have nothing to do with Christianity. This was our spirituality. Okay? All right. Now, that being said, all right, that being said, you went ahead and you got the spiritual protection. Okay? So, the anointing, the Holy Spirit, the blood of the Lamb, or the blood of the Ram from Amen. Ra, yes, Kemet people, 
the blood of the ram, which is where they got that from. Okay. All of this dealt with the ancestors. And this is where you got that protection from. Okay. When you ventured away from the spiritual path or the ancestral path and started doing things your way, okay, this is set in the comedic tradition. This is secular, one which they call Christianity, okay? Yeah. And everybody who went and ventured off the path that the ancestors set forth, okay? When you ventured off that path, you lost you you basically you you forfeited that protection. You forfeited those ancestral ways. You forfeited uh, the the spiritual guidance and all of that. You forfeited it. Okay. And when this happened, this is the reason why you hear these. You you heard the blue singers. They had to go and they had to visit this conjure person or this who lady or they had to visit these individuals in order for them to buy a hand in order for them to buy a mojo bag in order for them to buy protection okay and that protection didn't consist of them getting they didn't the protection didn't consist of them going to uh what was it, it didn't consist of them going to their ancestors okay it consisted of going and buying protection from some spirit that was willing to protect them out there in the grave, out there in the cemetery, out there in the field somewhere. That's where they got the protection. Okay? So, what I'm trying to tell you, and what I'm trying to explain to you is this, based upon our cultural perspective and our cultural understanding. If you're living a righteous life, you don't need protection. You're already protected. The ancestors protect you. The ancestors go in here and they give you guidance and all this. Okay? They do this for you automatically. Okay? This is the reason why. This is the reason why, you know, when you when you get off onto this path and you start dealing with this whole spirituality thing and, and you left the church, quote unquote, you left the church. How did you feel? You felt lost. You felt like something was missing. You felt like something was gone until you start working with your ancestors and you find out oh this is where we this is where it's at okay it's because your 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 family your mom your dad the people you who basically raised you up in the church and everything they're doing things by tradition okay but they don't have the theology they they lost the the theology behind it they lost the the, the spiritual sciences, the metaphysics, if you want to say, they lost the, the, the whole meaning and the purpose of doing it. So they're doing things by tradition, along with the fact that them being brainwashed and not when they deal with, deal with anything that has to do with Africa. So they're practicing their spirituality kind of without, they're, they're practicing their spirituality in denial. So as a result, this is the reason why we get that lackluster type of, you know, you, you, you get that, you know, you hear these people who go in here who are in the church, they'll say something and then to be profound because the spirits are speaking. But then soon all of a sudden it's like they go on something and you were like, what the hell are you talking about? That's where you get that from. You also hear that in the music. This is the reason why you're here. You, if you listen to certain gospel music, you're hearing them say something, something to be on it. It's the anointing. It's the spirits. It's the ancestors who are speaking through it. But then all of a sudden, it's like they do something new. Like, yeah, okay, I can't mess with you on that one. That's where it comes from. It's because they're going back and forth. They're flip-flopping based upon the brainwash. Okay? They're flip-flopping. I, 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 for instance, I'll tell you, give you, give you, you know, proof. Here's, here's another example. You can go back, anybody, anybody, I don't care how quote-unquote spiritual you may claim to be and how metaphysical and all that kind of stuff you may claim to be. Put on Rosetta Tharp or put on some Mahalia Jackson. You'll hear the anointing. You'll hear the ancestors speaking through their music. 
let them turn that off and you go ahead and you try to hear what they're talking about, completely different deal, okay? And again, it's because of the flip-flop. The whole reason of going ahead and getting involved in the whole African spirituality part is to get out of the flip-flop. That's the reason why we're doing this, okay? So if you're not dealing with the flip-flop, if you're dealing with the spirituality aspect of it, you are protected. If you're not dealing with the whole righteous aspect of it, if you're not dealing with the ancestors and everything, okay, then you got to buy protection. And that's why you need protection. And the thing about getting that kind of protection is that because of it, because of it not being from your own ancestral line, all right, it requires you going ahead. You might be required to do some, you know, some things that uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to even describe it. And that's mainly because it's outside of your ancestral line. It's outside of your ancestral way of doing things. So, again, and and to give you a, to give you kind of an idea or a hint of what I'm talking about. If you go back and you listen to some of these blues singers who talked about how they had to buy this hand, all the strange things they had to go through. That's the strange stuff that I'm talking about. That's the stuff you you gonna have to deal with because you're dealing with it from that perspective. You're dealing with some spirit, some some spirit that is not tied to your ancestral line. Okay, you're dealing with a spirit that is, you know, for the most part, is out there. Okay, and they're outside of the community. They're outside of the clan. You follow? Okay, because if you're inside the clan, which was the house, the the what do you call it? Inside our spiritual house, inside you know uh, the spiritual way in which our ancestors went ahead and set forth the way in which we do things. If you're inside that, you're already protected. You're inside the clan. You're inside the community, okay? This is the reason why this can be traced all the way back to Kemet. And it's just, it don't require, it doesn't take a whole lot to even, to even, you know, search and really look and understand that the witchcraft, the secular part and everything deals with set, okay? It, it doesn't require a whole lot to even think about that. And that's the beauty of it, okay? But... This is also part of the reason why you keep getting all this distraction discouraging you from actually getting involved in dealing with your ancestors and dealing with your spirit guides and working with your spirituality. Okay? This is where it comes from. All right? So, like I said, I just wanted to go ahead and I wanted to share that with you. Um, I wanted to let you know that, again, if you're dealing with your ancestors, you're actually trying to go in here and do things from a righteous perspective. And you're working with your ancestors, you're working with your guys. They're going to protect you, okay? Um, if you need any other further protection, they'll go in here and they'll share, this is what you got to do. Um, a great movie that kind of kind of hints on this, that kind of hints on talking about this, is, um, and I think it's on Amazon Prime. Um, it's called To Sleep With Anger, all right? Um, Danny Glover is in it. Um, I believe, I can't remember the lady's name, um, but she was the lady, I think, if I remember correctly, she played as like the um, the dorm mom on, on, on A Different World Once Upon a Time. She was also uh, the lady who played not the not in the not the Oracle in the first Matrix, but I think the second Matrix or so. Um, but anyway, the movie is called *The Sleep with Anger*, and in *The Sleep with Anger*, you'll see the family who basically—I'm not going to tell you the whole story—but basically, the family who's dealing with our spirituality, you'll see church going, everything, and the father carries a Toby. Okay, so still the same the same things, the same practices, okay? But then Danny Glover comes in, he ain't dealing with the spirituality, okay? You, he's that outside element. He represents and symbolizes that outside element. And he brings that outside element in, which kind of causes problems with the family. Same thing, same idea. 
that's our way of doing things okay so like i said i hope that helps i hope that makes a little bit more sense hope that kind of gives you a little bit of clarity of what we're talking about here um again like i said i welcome your comments and i welcome you know don't get me wrong don't think that i'm i'm shading anybody I welcome your comments and your your suggestions and everything. So please keep sharing them, okay? Um, other than that, until next time, Hatchapoo, peace. I am